Hi everybody, Ricky here from Burford Great Danes, a faith-based Great Dane breeder. This is a little chart that I put together from Dutchie's recent breeding. So we're back in Jersey now. It's been, oh, what's it been? Oh, like a week or so um, that we, we, cause we bred her in Michigan and we stayed in Indiana. So it was like right at the border. We absolutely loved it. By the way, if you've never been to like Shipshawana or Amish country, it was absolutely beautiful. It was a true blessing. You know, it's interesting, like the reason I went there is, is because there was a really good um, bloodline that I've been kind of trailing on her pedigree. Um, so a Hungarian dog on her side, she has, it's beautiful European breeding. This is going to be a absolutely uh, amazing breeding. Um, she has a lot of Hungarian uh, and European bloodline, also American. And the male, the stud that I went to has amazing German on the mom's side and a lot of Hungarian on the dad's side. And so I've been kind of like following this trail in her pedigree, trying to find something that's gonna bring forward that good European blood and and that's what I really wanted like her brother had was a beautiful European looking dog she has a little bit more American uh, of a look so I again I wanted to bring some of that bigger bone structure um just that nice European look you know a little um a little more muscle um, a little bit heavier. I don't like big jowls, so I wanted to tighten up. I, I, I like a bigger dog, but I don't like the loose jowls. Like it's just not my preference, and a lot of people do, and a lot of European dogs have that. But um, this male is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to be posting a lot of um, pictures of him and videos of the breeding. Everything went really well. But again, so to loop back. You know, it's funny, like the dog, I was following the trail and, you know, I was going there to breed her, right? Because this was the only male that I could find around that still had a lot of that bloodline that I wanted. So I was willing to travel. It was roughly, you know, I took my family, you know, the kids. So it was roughly supposed to be like a nine, 10 hour drive, but with the stops and everything, you know, it turned into like 12 ish hours. So. You know, the ride wasn't so great, but um, it was a blessing, the whole process. So, you know, again, the dog got me there, but I think it was so much more for me to see and for my family to see, because we had such a beautiful experience. Like, I'm literally looking at real estate there. That's how much I love it. Um, just kind of, you know, maybe buying a piece of land or, you know, having somewhere to to stay when we're out there maybe even a getting a RV. It just kind of opened up a lot for me. And, and that's how, you know, God works in mysterious ways. So, you know, again, it's like you're on a road thinking you're going for one reason, but yet there's so many other reasons behind that. And, and that's what this was. So, so anyway, I'll get into the whole trip. I want to post some videos and pictures and, you know, Amish country, so I absolutely loved it. I mean, my son playing with the Amish children. We made such great friends with the stud family, the, the family that owned the stud. Um, just, just beautiful people. So, this is my little chart. I'm gonna try to show you, and I'm sorry, I'm outside. Not the neatest. I'm gonna be doing this on the computer, but I was just kind of looking for myself. So. So day one was the day, when you see day one there, that's the day she bled. So that's always gonna be day one. It's a chicken that wants to come hang out with me. Dutchie's over there getting a little sun. So day one is the day she bled, okay? I did a progesterone test a few days later. So one, two, three, four, five days later, I did a progesterone test and it came back 1.8, really low, okay? So I went back, they recommended to go back like four or five days. I think I went back on the fourth day. So 17th, look at this. I mean, <laughs> I mean 17th, 18th, 19th, the 20th. 
so, I'm so sorry. The 20th here, she had a 4.8, so basically a five. So it was going up pretty quick. This was like, this was my go time. She, she was already in heat for like a week. You know, ordinarily you want to breed like 10 to, you know, not every dog. This is why we do this testing, but you know, usually like between like day 10 and day 15 is what I've learned is like that point. Now we were doing a live cover um, and I'll explain that in a moment. So it was a little different as in timing, like live cover, you could go a little, you want to go a little bit earlier because it's going to take a little while for that semen to travel, you know, to make its way. So it's different when you're AIing because you're going directly in or, um, or definitely if you're doing uh, surgical. But so I started boogieing when I seen a, almost a five, I'm like, let's go. We're packing up. And this was a little bit tricky because I had to pack up the family, pull my son out of school. I wasn't sure when to get a hotel date. So everything was up in the air and obviously making all this effort. Like I wanted to make sure that this breeding goes well, which I think it really did. So anyway, we left on the, t so I'm just gonna, I'm, so, I'm sorry. So we left on the 20th, you see there, 21st, we drove, hold on a second, we, we drove the 21st, I mean, you want to help, you want to help me diagram this, all right, you peck at what day I want to talk about, go ahead, yeah, <laughs> okay, um, da, 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 da. so, yes, we drove the 21st, and then we bred, day one, we bred on the 22nd, which was a Friday. We bred again Saturday, the 23rd, okay? By the way, they tied every single time. We bred three times in total. The ties were getting longer every time we did it, which is a really good sign. Everything went well with the breeding. I mean, it was, you know, just, just a God blessing. So we took the day off because Amish on Sunday, God people, they don't work. I mean, it's a ghost town there. It was it was awesome though. It gave us an opportunity to kind of like slow it down. You know, the family, we went for a walk, we got lunch, took a day off. We bred again on Monday, the 25th. And that's when we left. We bred her, we kind of spent a little time with the, with the family and then we left right from there. So it was kind of a quick trip, but you know what? things kind of slow down out there and like it was just an awesome town so i felt like we were there a lot longer so okay so today how many it's been like you know like a week or so since the breeding roughly it's gonna be a tricky i'm not sure when to count i guess you're really supposed to count on like the first day you bred so that was a friday so it's already been over a week. So, and the reason I'm saying that is now it's gonna come time to testing. So you, there's a couple options. Either you could get a ultrasound, like a sonogram where the, you go to the vet and they'll scan. And there's a really good place by me that does it for a fair price, like 60 bucks, no vet visits. So I'm probably gonna go with that option. But another option is there's a, like a blood test that you could do. So you could actually do a at home pregnancy test it's a kit, you just prick their inside of their lip to get a little blood, you put it in the, um, the solution, and, and then you get, you, you have like a test strip, like a, like a human pregnancy test, and that's supposed to be really accurate, but you know what, for almost the same price, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the uh, ultrasound, and, and that'll confirm it. So they say roughly to wait like, like 30 days, you know, like three weeks, you know, some, something like that. So, um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm not sure exactly when to count from. I think it's the first breeding. So because she, they tied three times. So three live cover breedings. Now, another interesting thing that I want to mention is, and I asked a breeder mentor of mine and they said that, yeah, it happens that she actually bled through her whole heat. So I hope I got it right. I mean, I think so. She was really receptive and, you know, I didn't go ahead and wait for another another progesterone test, which they recommended. I just kind of like, I was scared to miss it. So I just kind of got going. Um, so that's that. So now 
the next step is just kind of waiting for the pregnancy test. And, you know, I'm, I'm upticking her food. I'm giving her some folic acid every day. You might want to Google that and look into that. Just one pill a day. I believe it's five milligrams. I bought it on Amazon. Um, and I'm just up kicking her food, a little healthier food, adding some pumpkin, some um, frozen sardines, some peanut butter, some carrots. Um, I'm even giving her a little uh, canned wet food. So really trying to up get her. She, she's like really athletic and slim. So I want to kind of get her weight up a little bit because obviously if she's going to be having puppies, they're going to be taking so much from her. So so that's that. So we shall see. It's exciting stuff. Again, it went so well. Super blessed. And um, and I'll keep updating. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Um, if you watch some of my older videos, you'll see um, that this journey... I'm sorry, if, if you go back and watch some of my other videos, um, you, can, you can see the whole process of this whole journey. So God bless.